what's going on guys what, welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about how do websites work we're going to go over all of the inner workings of how you access specific sites how all of this works and we're going to go over specific popular programming languages uh, used to create websites and we're going to take some simulations to understand how all of this works so basically how do websites work uh, was inspired from a room in try hack me called THM how do websites work that's the name of the room by the way um, I, li I like to explain the room this way on the word instead of just going over the readings and answering the questions although we're gonna do that later after we do the introduction here so let's talk about the components of uh, the internet or the components of the process of how you access the internet so the very first thing you have your browser so browsers differ all of us have different pre preferences personally i prefer google chrome some people prefer um say safari right for ios users and also we have mozilla firefox imagine that some people prefer using edge microsoft edge to access the internet so the very first component you need is the browser so it depends on your preferences so the browser actually makes a request to the web server right so your browser asks the web server to display a page so the web server could be any server on the internet that hosts a specific website request say you are browsing to reddit reddit.com right so reddit.com is a website that is hosted on a web server now the web server could be anything and that's very technical by the way could be apache could be run on apache could be run on um, nginx could be run on uh, iis in case you're using windows right and there are many other softwares that run web servers so reddit.com could be hosted on any one of these uh, softwares to run as a web server so basically when you want to browse to reddit.com or you want to open reddit.com you make a request to the web server okay so it goes like that of course in order to make the request from your browser to the web server you need the internet so without internet access you cannot access you cannot make any request to any web server whatsoever now we call that uh, most of the time it's called hey HTTP requests okay HTTP requests and that's P so HTTP requests now the web server will respond with something called hey HTTP response right so here we call it hey HTTP response and that's how you access reddit.com and any other website so basically when web server returns the page or response with a http response you actually see the page of reddit.com so you'll be able to see the reddit.com page in your browser reddit that's basically how it works now there are two major components of how uh, websites actually is constituted or composed so the very first in every in every web server we have two components we have uh, let's use a different color so we have the client side all right client side and we have another side called the server side or the back end so you often hear terms if you are a web developer you hear often terms such as front end right and you often hear back end in job listings you may see uh, job listings that ask for front end developer or back end developer so front end developer or the front end or the client side is actually the side that your browser handles so when the page is displayed such as reddit.com on your browser it's actually displayed on the on the client side so the client side is the browser basically the way your website renders the way the browser renders the website now the back end is the server side it is the server side here that's the back end now the back end is actually handled by the server 
and could be any server that processes your request and returns a response. So the server side processes our HTTP requests and returns the HTTP response. The client side is responsible for rendering the page or displaying the page once the HTTP response is received. And by the way, it's worth mentioning that when the page is displayed, most of the time, the HTTP response code is 200. Now, HTTP response codes are too many. You can Google them on the internet. But when you are able to access a page, it means that the HTTP response is 200. If the page is not found or is deleted from the server, most likely it is the code will be 404. So when you ask for reddit.com, for example, and the observer returns 404, it means the observer is telling you, I don't have the page anymore. All right. So that's basically how it works in brief. Now let's talk about popular programming languages. So what are the programming languages that make up a website? So the very first we have, it's very popular and most of you know it, it's the hey HTML. Now HTML actually uh, used to build websites and define the structures. It's called the hypertext markup language. It's all, all of the websites are written in HTML. And HTML actually is composed of, we call it the tags. HTML tags or HTML elements. Now, they are, these are the tags or the elements are kind of building blocks of the HTML pages. It actually tells the browser, your browser, it tells your browser how to display the page. It contains instructions for your browser uh, on how to render the page. For example, you may in HTML you may see elements such as h1, header 1, um, h2, image. These are all tags in HTML used to display, the, uh, used to uh, aid your browser to properly display the structure of the website. So image displaying images, h1 for displaying headers, h2, h3, and also you have links and you have titles so on and so forth. Now, it's very worth mentioning that sometimes you may need to, it's actually now part of the HTML, but we're gonna dive into that later when we do the simulation. Sometimes inside the tags, let's take, let's take an example. For example, the P tag. The P tag actually is used to write paragraphs, right? So between the P tags here, slash P, so this is the start of the tag, all right? And this is the end of the tag. In between them, you write your own text. And this text will be displayed by the browser, right? Now, sometimes, inside the start tag here, you may add other elements, such as ID equal one. Now, this is not a programming video, right? I'm just giving brief, right? Uh, introduction to aid you understand how websites work you may see some elements like id inside the tags such as p for example inside uh say the image tag so the image tag here i don't have any uh, place in the board here let's open a new one replicate this one or let's remove this one add a new page Where is the add a new page button? I don't see the capability to add a new page here. Ah, oh, add a page. All right. So sometimes you have the image button, image tag, right? And this is the end of the image tag. So basically you close the tag with slash image or a slash A, depending on the tag you're using. Sometimes you see inner attributes inside the tag. For example, most of the time, if you want to use an image tag and define its source or location on the server you would use the source source equal and in here you define in the path on your web server if you're using a path outside the web server you may use here a link instead to define the path and so on and so forth so that's how uh, it works basically now after we talked about the html and its uh, role in uh, websites let's talk about the CSS so CSS actually is used only in styling 
to define colors and other styling attributes we're going to talk about much about css but it's actually only used for styling now the last one it's not the last one actually but let's say it is the before the last one that i'm going to talk about here it is the javascript or as they call it the gs now gs is very important to give functionality and interactivity to the website for example buttons buttons you can't use buttons if you don't use javascript right and you can't also call elements of html without using javascript so you can say that in simpler words javascript is used to convert your site from a static page right into a dynamic page so a dynamic page is a page that is interactive it contains interactive elements so we call it inner active interactive elements could be elements such as buttons are interactive elements banners are interactive elements um, sliders are interactive elements all of these actually you cannot use them if you don't use javascript now let's talk let's take some simulations of how we use html javascript to structure websites all right let's dive into it so this is the room how websites work and now we're going to talk the simulations for the html side so as you can see we have on the right here html code and below the html code we have the render of that code how the, it means how this page is uh, how this page uh, actually looks when you this when, when it renders on the site or in the browser so when you click on render as you can see you see how the code looks like in the browser from the front end now this is the back end this is the front end all right so let's first go over these tags and then we answer the questions so as you can see at very first we have the doc type every html document starts with this one next we have the html tags and then comes the head header tags the head tags between the head tags we define a title tag for the website this is the title of the website try hack me html editor as you can see every tag starts with the, the name of the tag and ends with the or close with the slash and the name of the tag inside the body we define elements such as the headers the paragraph the images right uh, as i told you guys this is not a programming video or not uh, a video to teach you how to uh, use html or javascript this is solely uh, meant to teach you how to how websites work from this perspective okay so so i see how we have cat website this is the header and we have the paragraph as you can see the paragraph are actually way smaller than headers and we have two images image one and note notes that image is broken so you get this right when the path to the image is either not valid or doesn't exist so in the questions he will ask to fix this why the image here is broken so as you can see one of the images on the cat website is broken fix it and the image will reveal the hidden text answer so we're assuming that the image does exist on the server right but we have to find out what's wrong with this as you can see this is the name of the image cat-2 and we have dot for the extension but there is no real but there is no information about the extension here it's missing so given the first image extension is jpg so we can type here jpg and render and the image is displayed this is the answer now the next question add a dog image to the page by adding another image tag on line 11 the dog image location is image dog one png so we copy the location and here we add a new image tag and define the source in this case we type in the path to the image right and we close this one so when we hit our render now we have the uh, dog image so all of the, the, the key, key takeaway here is that the image images on any site are actually rendered on the browser 
using these elements HTML elements the image tag okay now let's talk about the JavaScript again we have an interactive site here through which we can explore and we're asked here to um, create a button so first let's go over the code here so we have the start of the document HTML header try hack me editor the title and we have here dev elements ID equal demo and hi there so this lays hi there here lastly we have a script here so here in between the script tags we define a JavaScript code and we tap here an attribute type equal text JavaScript we define that the type of uh, attribute we are going to use is JavaScript and between the script tags we add the JavaScript here okay so what we're asked to do here click the view side button on this task on the right hand side add JavaScript that changes the demo elements content to hack the planet so this is the demo element so instead of hi there we're gonna make it hack the planet so using JavaScript we can call other elements inside HTML code and that's how we make the site interactive right so we can call elements here we can call the title tag we can call the body tag and make changes on their contents for example it's given here uh, to you the answer this is the button element you can take it and paste it here all right so the button this is not the button actually I don't, I don't need to no this is wrong not this one so this one here so I'm gonna explain how this works so document dot get element by ID so this one actually it looks for the elements on the HTML code whose ID equal to demo so we have this element right and it's ID equal to demo so we're gonna retrieve it and with inner dot inner HTML we can change its contents so instead of hi there I use hack the planet render and as you can see hack the planet now has changed without the need to change the uh, contents the, the contents directly from here all we have to do is to use JavaScript and call the element change its content this way next one add now we can add the button and the button HTML from this task that changes the elements text to button clicked on the editor on the right so it simply asks you to add a, a button where its title equal button clicked update the code by clicking on the render all right so this is it's actually given here you can take it and since this is a JavaScript element you're gonna have to add it here between the script tags as you can see we add now a button using the button tags on click so when we click on the button on click it means when you click on it it retrieves the element whose ID equal demo so we have one element whose ID equal demo which is the hi there here so we retrieve it and we change its contents to button clicked right and lastly we have a click me this is the actually uh, the name of the button so it's the text written over the button so when you click on render there was an error with the JavaScript it is correct is it correct let's see here so our problem here is that we need to cancel the script tags for just to work for just to work and don't forget to remove the closing tag now when you render as you can see a button has appeared under high there as you can see the text written over the button is click me right now when we click on the button as you can see it says button clicked right so it changed the contents of the demo element to button clicked it was high there right since I retrieved its um, content using the using its using its ID I was able to change on it without the need to uh, going there and change on the uh, element itself this is very useful when you have thousands of lines of code you can't just go to every element and change its content with a simple uh, JavaScript you can retrieve any content and change it for any element all right that's for JavaScript and we have something about sensitive, sensitive data exposure all right for sensitive data exposure it's actually one of the OWASPs 
or application vulnerabilities listed in the OWASP top 10. Now, if you don't know what is OWASP, so basically you can go to OWASP top 10. Let's go to OWASP top 10. And here we see the top 10 web security attacks or vulnerabilities. So if you take a look here, let's search for sensitive. All right. So now sensitive data exposure is actually has been repurposed to cryptographic failures. So now here it's giving you an intro to sensitive data exposure and what it is. So before we you read here, just make uh, such just um, just bear in mind that sensitive data exposure is one of the OWASP top ten application vulnerabilities and by the way if you want a full course on application vulnerabilities you can go to you can access one of my courses let me show you the courses here so basically I have a course on application attacks or OWASP top 10 this is the field notes this is the courses so as you can see, I have explained sensitive data exposure in detail here. Uh, you can access the director of the courses by subscribing to the channel membership. Uh, the special training videos level, you will be able to see the uh, courses. I am, uh, this actually this is finished. Right now, Metasploit is in progress. I'm gonna finish this one soon. Um, yeah, so let's get back to sensitive data exposure. So what it means, it means actually the website is leaking sensitive information such as private web directories, private files, hard-coded credentials. Sometimes you are able to find it, the uh, sensitive data by clicking on the source code of the site. It's one of the ways to find sensitive information. For example, this site here. If you click on login, as you can see, it says incorrect credentials. Try looking at the source code or pressing Control U. So we click on source code. And we see here the source code of this page, right? Down here, where it is. So see one, see this here. It leaks information, or it leaks credentials, username and password. Normally, in real uh, scenarios, it's very rare you would stumble upon uh, username and passwords in the sites unless the website is abandoned or not maintained. But it's actually one of the ways to put in mind. In order to find sensitive information, start with viewing the page source. Okay. Next one, HTML injection. Also, I talked about this in my course here. So basically, HTML injection, when you are able to, let's click on the view site. So in here, HTML injection is a way to inject HTML code that actually gets processed by the web server as a code. So in secure websites, when you supply um, HTML code instead of actual text or actual input, it doesn't get executed. On vulnerable sites, it gets executed. For example here, let's take a look at this one. View the website on this task and inject HTML so that a malicious link to HTTP hacker is shown. Let's copy that. Now in order to show the link in here, we have to use the A element or they call it the a tag so the a tag inside the a tag we can define a hyperlink right and we can display it here let's take a look at this vulnerable site so it asks what's your name so we can type my name say hi and it says welcome Watson. now let's try injecting a html code and see how the uh, this site processes this code so a a is for displaying a hyperlink, right? Then href and the site we require to display is hacker.com. We close the tag and then in here you want to type the hyperlink or the text that will appear uh, on uh, as a hyperlink. So we type, for example, click me and then we close the A tag. So say hi. Now, if the site is vulnerable to HTML injection, it will process this code and displays a link to hacker.com where the hyperlink is click me. Say hi. As you can see, hi, click me now has appeared 
as a hyperlink when you click on click me now it's going to take you to hacker.com click on that uh, yeah it's because it's a demo site so uh, that was for today's video guys if you like that hit subscribe hit like whatever you want and we will definitely see you in the next video